This is an insane record. Before we talk about what Brian Callahan had to say about this Bills game and all that kind of good stuff, wow. Joe Burrow leads all NFL quarterbacks with a 20 and 2 rec overall record when scoring first. Can he make it 21 tonight? And this was posted before the night game. He made it he made it 21 and 2. He is 21 and 2 record-wise when scoring first. Talk about the pure dominance of like if you get him that's why again we obviously that's how I received starting off the game uh, on Sunday. But it's also just the fact of like if you give him that ball first, things are gonna happen. This guy is gonna go down the field, he's gonna score, he's gonna make plays. Absolutely amazing. But anyway, though, so here's what Brian Callahan said about the game. He said about Joe Burrow's performance, uh, throwing 31 for 44 passes, 348 yards and two touchdowns. He said it's hard to play much better, Callahan said. Truthfully, he was fantastic. Now, that's pretty obvious information, let's be honest. <laughs> we know he's amazing. But he did then allude to the fact of why Jamar Chase was not getting any passes or why Jamar Chase wasn't able to get the football. He did go ahead and say that they really, uh, they did a really good, uh, nice job of varying their looks, disguising the coverages. I thought they made it challenging on him mentally, and it didn't really face him. Now, this obviously is talking about Joe Burrow, but this is kind of going more into why Jamar Chase was not, you know, able to get open. But it was a lot of work, a lot of adjusting, a lot of things going on over the course of the game. Just to see him handle that is his traditionally calm and cool, collected way. It was pretty awesome. He played as good as you can play. One of the bigger challenges, though, was scheming Jamar Chase out of the game plan. And to that point, this is what they said. They took a pretty aggressive approach, he continued. There was almost a safety near him, over him, cheated to him on almost every passing down in the game. I've said this before and I'll say it again. You know, I feel like Chase coming out and saying that he wants to do the touchdown celebration of Chad Johnson. Chad Johnson being in the audience, you know, right there, ready for the touchdown celebration. Said he would, you know, write the checkbook. He would cast, uh, you know, give him the money for the fine he would get. I feel like that sparked up the bill so much where it came to a point where... Buffalo's defense said, we are not going to allow Chase to score a touchdown. Like, we'll lose this game before we allow Chase to score a touchdown. And I feel like if he didn't say that, Chase would have had more yards. It probably would have had a touchdown. But I think also Chase, in that game, I think it would have been more... Less T. Higgins and more balance of every receiver getting the ball, meaning Chase too, right? Because I feel like what the Buffalo Bills said here is, we don't care if we lose this game. We're just not going to get embarrassed by Chase. And it was actually their downfall in the end that really destroyed them, right, in the end here. Because, like, they were so hellbent on going after Chase that they allowed T to go 119 yards and, you know, no tutties, but 119 yards in that game. Uh, Drew, uh, Drew Sample had a touchdown. Hudson had a um, a really big game. Irv Smith had a touchdown. So it's like they kind of overcommitted so much to Chase to avoid that you know touchdown celebration that it actually bit them in the butt in the end here, which is kind of ironically funny. He continues and says, that's a good football team and it's a good defensive staff. And they did a good job of that, Callahan said. But the benefit we have is we have a lot of other guys that can play football well too, which ended up being a big night for T and our tight ends. And like I said, yes, exactly. When you allocate too many resources on one player like Jamar Chase, well, yes, you're like, guess what? He's not going to do anything tonight. He's not getting a touchdown. He's not making plays. We are going to shut him down. Yeah, but you're not shutting down the other guys on the field. You're not shutting down Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, you know, Irv Smith. Um, I never thought I'd say that in my life. Uh, Drew Sample. You know, you're not shutting these guys down. And what ends up happening is they have big nights then. So at the end, you know, you're, is it the mentality of you cut off your nose to spite your face because, yeah, you're saving yourself in one category, 
But you're not going to win the game like that. And they didn't win the game because of it. That's a big reason why they allowed us to get 21 points because they wanted to shut down Chase. Now, in the second half, they did a really good job shutting us down. We only scored three points in the second half. But for that context of shutting down Chase, I think it was their downfall. Uh, Higgins proved it with a season-high 110 receiving yards and a tight end combined that position group best output of the season with Drew Sample, Hudson, and Smith combined for 10 yards, uh, 10 catches, 101 yards, and two tutties. Obviously, the tutty to um, our man's um, Irv Smith. I, I still can't believe this. When I saw the touchdown, my first instinct, my brain said, "That's Tanner Hudson." And I was like, "Well, that's not a white guy. That's not Tanner Hudson." And now I'm like, "That there's no way." There is no way. My brain processed that so quickly of that's no way that is Irv Smith. And it was. It was somehow some way Irv Smith. He continues and says about the Joe Mixon on... Um, oh my bad. Yeah, so he talks about the final drive. And this is actually a reporter actually asked uh, Joe about this too. About the final drive. How they went with a 32-yard pass to Tyler Boyd. Instead of going with just running the ball over and over again consistently. And the way Joe put it was, you know, he was open. <laughs> Pretty much he was open. They kept blitzing him and let, leaving the over top wide open. So he went deep instead of going, you know, for the run play over and over and over again. And right here, he did go ahead. They asked, obviously, Brian Callahan about that. Why didn't you just keep running the ball? He says that last one, the first and 10, there were three minutes and 40 seconds or whatever it was, just a core play for us. That's our guy have executed a million times, Coach Taylor said. Actually, this is Coach Taylor. It's not Brian Callahan. Um, it was a man coverage. Joe did a great job of reading it. TB, TB was where he needed to be. Uh, the throw was kind of before he came out of his break, knowing he was going to get flattened. Uh, oh, wait, going to flatten it. TB knowing I got to flatten it here and knowing where Joe was going to throw it and then staying in bounds, getting more yards, getting us in plus territory. There's so much we could have finished the game off. There's so much that we could finish the game off right away. I can't say enough good things about the chemistry those two guys have. And I do agree with that. And, you know, like, again, like, that was... They asked Coach Taylor about a lot in the press conference after the game. Was like, listen, you were very aggressive in this game. You know, you were probably more aggressive in this game than we've seen you in a good bit of time when it comes to some of your play calls. And, you know, a lot of that was type stuff like that. And I think the reason why he was so aggressive with that play call of going deep to, you know, TB there instead of just running the ball and probably getting stopped three plays it was because of the fact that he saw what happened in the Seahawks game. And we know what happened in the Seahawks game. You know, we went very end of the game. We get the ball back with like, what, two minutes to go? And we can't get a first down and run the clock off. We got stopped three plays in a row. We threw a deep first play, ironically enough. Second play, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball. Could not get a first down. They get the ball back. They have a chance to go down and win. Our defense gets a stop. This time, we're changing it up. This time, we actually are throwing the ball down the field, trying to make a play, get in a plus field position, and potentially get a field goal. And if you look at that Seahawks game, right? I mean, even that time we threw it down the field, I say quote, you know, quotation marks, because we did throw it down the field, but it was we overthrew the guy just because. Like, we overthrew the guy for no reason just to get the two-minute warning out of the way. It was out of bounds. Like, it wasn't even a catchable ball. So... I don't know why, still, why they called that play instead of just running it that play. But nonetheless, though, I like the aggressiveness. I think the fourth and five was kind of questionable and not kicking a field goal in that situation. But you know what? It ends up with a win. And that really is all we can talk about at the moment. You know, gave us a win in the end. Guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys next one. Peace out.